Hello and welcome to Travel Babble with Basha. I am Basha, your hostess today, as we take a behind the scenes tour of the newest ship to the Norwegian cruise line, the Norwegian Prima. This ship is an entirely different layout from any of the ships that they've had in the past. Now they are currently coming out with the Viva, which will start sailing from the time I'm making this video in about a month or so. So there is going to be another ship. I know they may make some small minor tweaks and then they may make some larger tweaks going forward. But the Norwegian Prima is different. Now when I say different, to me different means different. It does not mean better. It does not mean worse. It means different. I enjoyed the Prima. I'll have more videos coming up. I already have a few out about some of the staterooms. But let's take a behind the scenes tour. And let's start where our tour started in the theater. Now the theater is a very nice place and they tried to make it multi-purpose. I have seen this on another cruise ship on another cruise line and I like the way that they've done this so that they can get more use. I think they could get a lot more use out of it than they actually do. Now in the theater when we went in because it was during the tour it was empty and they had the seats and everything set up completely the way they would for a show and in this case as you can see the seats they do fold up and fold down it makes it easier to get in and out when there's a large crowd so it was a nice theater it was decent size it wasn't too big and I know people complain about finding seats I never had any problem but as I travel solo a lot of times there'll be an empty seat I can always find a place to fill in there is a screen up front and there is a stage behind there that that will open when there are a lot of shows going on but there is as you see that tiny little stage area and you'll see that throughout in the theater area up above of course is the lighting system now this lighting system it moves up and moves down different lights of course turn on turn off as needed and there also are the disco balls because they had the Donna Summer Show. Of course, you can't have the Donna Summer Show without some disco balls and some lights. But this light fixture did move around and that was very nice. A lot of the parts of the theater moved around. Again, this is a different view. This is during one of the shows. It was going to be the Donna Summer Show. You see that small stage area with the screen behind it, which will open. And you see how the lights have all lit up a little bit differently with those disco balls being down. This was a later show. This was The Price is Right. At the beginning, they show things on the movie screen. And behind, they would open up, depending on what the game was, you could see behind. But they also had people who came out in front. And they would do little trivia as you were waiting, which was very interesting. Again, the seats were all out. The seats were full. Now, one of the things that was nice, one of the nights, or a couple nights, they had dance parties in there. So during one of the nights when they had a dance party, as you can see over on the far right, all of the seats are pushed back. It gives that big open area for a dance floor. Now people could still sit up on the balcony level and see in, but the entire seating is back. And in order to accommodate that, to still give people seats in, in some fashion, they had these little areas almost like an island that they brought out now it was limited seating you had to be there early if you wanted to be on that or wait for somebody to get up there were seats there were some tables there again you see the screen now during one of the shows they had something similar to this but remember these seats that were pushed all the way back to the right they had them out maybe part way and then they had a stage that projected out into the dance floor and on that stage, they had a band. Now, I didn't get any pictures of that because, to be honest, I had started upstairs in the balcony where everybody pretty much was other than the few people who got lucky to get some seats. And partway as it were starting and the bands are starting to really get loud, I saw the crew was down partying on the side. And I knew some of the crew, so what am I going to do? You know, I had to go down and dance. There were several of us solo travelers that we all went down. We came in the back side and we stood out there and danced and we're right beside the stage when the performers came on and off. We were able to talk with them, but I didn't get a picture because I was too busy having fun. But it was a very nice theater. As I said, it's very versatile. 
put the seats out, put the seats halfway back, put the seats all the way back, pull out these extra little areas to sit, or just have a dance floor with no seats out. After that, the next area we went to was the laundry area. Now, a lot of people say, ah, laundry's boring, and I agree, it can be boring if you're the one doing it. But it's amazing to see on the ship how they do laundry. It's a huge area, very busy. As you can see, one of the workers there, our tour guide was talking to him to say, hey, we're bringing the tour in. And you can see these bins. You can see he's back there. He's getting ready to press some shirts, and he's going to tell us about it. But this is one of the big machines. So these are throughout. You will see them throughout the area, the washing machines. This is actually a small one but there were a lot of machines in there. We got to stand there, we got to talk to people. Now, the washing machines are, are, are nice, and you can see here how they do the pressing. You see some jackets and some shirts in the back, and you realize these people in the crew and the officers, they're always so put together. They must get up and iron every day. Well, no, they don't. If it's their crew and their work shirts, they send them to the laundry, the laundry cleans them, and then the laundry presses them. This is a very important job because this gentleman right here is the one who is keeping everybody looking spick and span. There are also lots of sheets on the ship. Think about how many beds there are and when they will change those and how much laundry that can make. So the nice thing is, is they have this big machine where after the sheets are washed, they may still be a little damp and they feed it into this machine and it goes through, it finishes the drying, it folds it and it spits it out the other end. So you'll see these gentlemen, see how many sheets they have. They are just repetitively taking those sheets and putting them in that machine. But the nice thing for them is it is coming out the other side folded. Then they can give it, put it to the, you know, where the room stewards will get it, they go put it on the beds. You can see another area of the machine where you can see stuff coming out. Again, look at how much laundry they do. They not only do your sheets, your towels, they do crew laundry, they do passenger laundry. I know when I'm on a cruise, I send at least halfway through, I send a big bag of laundry to be done. More laundry. It's everywhere now these all mean something to them they've tagged them in certain ways so that they know where that laundry goes and what it is but again they have machines so we were standing here watching this machine as the gentleman was putting things in and here comes your towels all folded ready to go it spits them out and then it puts them up he doesn't even have to bend over to pick them up it will put them up and fold them in a nice neat pile but still not the most interesting thing to do but it is so very necessary and these machines are great because if you want to talk about prior to having these machines there could be somebody whose full-time job was just standing folding towels now there are days when I think oh I want uh, something boring to do my mind is tired I don't want to have to think today but that gets repetitive after a while and it gets very boring. So having these machines is very helpful. Now, one of the other places that was really great that we got to go on our tour, and it was simply because it was perfect timing, we got to see the crew bar. Now, we saw the inside crew bar. There is also an outside crew bar, but this is the crew bar that's inside. So if the weather's not as nice maybe they're in a cold area right now they're up in the iceland area sometimes it's been cold they've had some snow on the trip currently and they can celebrate and get together now the bar as i said is the crew bar so it's only for the crew and just like we go to the bar and we get drinks they go and get drinks but they have to pay for theirs but now their drinks in the crew bar are much cheaper than the drinks that we pay for that's one of their benefits they also, do have to be careful, though, when they're in the bar. They have limits and, and rules on when and what they can drink. If they're getting ready to go on duty, they can only, you know, maybe they have to stop drinking a certain number of hours. Sometimes it may depend on what their role is on the ship. But they can go to the crew bar. And it's not just for drinking. 
it's a nice spot to hang out. As you can see, there's a nice bar there. There's a lot of times there's stools. And you'll see when we were in there, they had a bunch of stuff just packed over to the side. But they'll put those chairs out. They'll have birthday parties there. I've seen them celebrate some of the crew's birthday parties. Maybe they'll have a send-off for one of the crew who has finished their contract or maybe several and they have a send-off to them to go home. So it is a nice place if they can't be at the outside crew bar to be at the inside crew bar and to celebrate and just you know relax for a little while after they've dealt with us passengers. Now one of the other sections that is always interesting because everybody has to eat is the galley and this was our tour guide one of the, the head chefs was there to help us along with our tour director who was one of the cruise next guys and it's interesting you go in and it's you know all this metal stainless steel it is immaculate which is something that's good to hear when you know your food is coming out of there now they are doing a lot of food there every day and their specials or their meals for the day, they will have pictures of these hanging along one of their counters. And it will have information such as what is included in it. You know, maybe a little bit of information that the, the your waiter might need to know. Because when you sit down at that table and you think, oh, you ask him what his recommendations are. or Well, I see, you know, you're having this meal tonight. What is in that? He has been given a chance to look at these and to know so that he can answer your questions. It's very important, especially if you have certain allergies that he knows what's in there or she, so they can tell you. So these pictures are lined up. It's not only so waiters know what's in there, but so the cooks also as they're getting familiar with what they're serving that evening. This is one of the people putting together some special dishes. And as you can see, these are some snacks. There's various snacks here. These are usually the snacks either for the Haven or for people in the club balcony that may get a snack in the afternoon. Some other people may get them depending on um, what, what cabin they're in or their latitude status. But they've prepared these all right here. Now to me, this is one of the good areas. These are desserts. They're getting them ready for the evening meal. And it's amazing how much these, you know, they go through. And just to look at these, the variety. This gentleman in the galley was making bread. His full job on that day was just making bread. And you can see he's made all of these. A little bit closer look. And then he has some machines in the back that he puts them in. So they actually bake them, but he does have to prepare them. And then they come out. So you can see these were some of the products that he had been making during that day while we were watching. Again, our tour guide just pointing out the various areas and asking us to look around. And some of the are hard workers. I can't help but tell you, these are the people that we thank for the food. They work hard. I mean, you think about how many people are on the ship. Let's say 3,500, 4,000 people, somewhere in there. And they are fixing the majority of those meals. And not just dinner. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Now, if you go to a specialty restaurant, some of the specialty restaurants will have a separate kitchen, but the majority of people will be eating from this kitchen, and these people are very hardworking. Their neckerchiefs are different colors, and that is a status symbol. They will know who is in charge of what area and who is the higher boss and what they can do. Don't forget... They also do room service. So here you see a gentleman. He's gotten a room service order. He is going back and forth. Now, that could get a lot of steps in. And what could really be tiring is if he has to go up all those steps. Luckily for them, there is an escalator. They can go up. They can bring the dirty trays back down on the escalator. They have different ways behind the scenes. You won't see somebody walking through the main area of the ship generally carrying the food service. They go up these escalators, they hit on crew elevators, and then they come out of the crew area directly to where they need to be. But the people in the galley, thank you to every one of them. Thank you for letting us visit, and thank you for making us good food. Now, we did not make it to the bridge, but... There's always somebody who's in charge of the bridge, and he was good enough to come out and meet us. And that is 
the captain, and this, our captain at this time was Master Roger. He was getting ready to leave the ship right after my cruise. He was going on his vacation, and then he was going to come back to the Prima. And he came out and he welcomed a, a group of us. This is um, him standing up in the observation lounge talking to our group. I was unable to get a photo, so one of my friends, Mark, was good enough, and he said I, I told him I'd give him credit. He just wanted to be known as Mark, so thank you, Mark, for taking this picture. Now, Master Roger is fun. A lot of the captains, if you thought of in years gone by, you thought, oh, they just drive the ship, that's all they do. But there are quite a few of them who are really nice to get to know. It's hard to get to know them because they are so busy. Even when they're not on the bridge, they're usually busy. But he did come out and, and meet us. And Master Roger has talent. You may not have realized this, but let's listen for a moment to Master Roger. Compliments of Denise Martin. <laughs> And that was wonderful to have Master Roger serenade us. Now, that was just a snippet from the entire song that he did with one of the duos who had been playing around the ship. So thank you, Master Roger, for coming out to greet us, even though we know you're busy. I hope you enjoyed a short behind-the-scenes tour of the Norwegian or NCL Prima. As I said earlier, it is one of their new ships. I hope to do some more in front of the scenes videos for you to get a feel for it. If you like this and you enjoyed it and you'd like to see more, please like my video, subscribe to my channel, go pack your bags, and go enjoy the Norwegian Prima.